Morning. Welcome to today's topic, which is the innate immune system. So there are two branches of the innate immune system. So immunity is the body's ability to resist pathogens and defend against infection. The body's reaction to these infections agent is known as the immune response. There's two types of immunity. There's innate or non-specific immunity and there's adaptive or specific immunity. So each type of response has specialised immune and tissues associated with functions. So the key point you will want to pick up from here is that innate immunity is non-specific and adaptive is specific. So the main characteristics of innate immunity is that it is non-specific, it has an inherited ability, it protects against foreign cells or substances without having to recognise their specific identity. It does not require prior exposure to invaders and it recognises a general conserved property that marks invaders as foreign. Innate defences make up the first line of defence of the body and these include physical barriers such as the skin, stomach acids which destroy more pathogens, and the lining of intestinal and in, 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 internal pathways, such as the respiratory and digestive tracts that, that are protected by mucus, cilia and tight junctions. The innate local response, so the innate immune response is the, is the innate local response to infection injury. Inflammation produces local redness, swelling, heat and pain. It also destroys or inactivates foreign invaders, clears areas of dead cells and sets stage for tissue repair. So there are key cellular components of this process such as phagocytes, which are mainly as well as neutrophils, macrophages, dendritic cells, as well as mast cells. And these are induced and regulated by cytokines. So the injured tissue and immune cells secrete inflammatory signals that induce vascular changes in inflammation. This leads to increased blood flow to the area, increasing delivery of beneficial proteins and leukocytes. There is also increased vascular permeability, which allows plasma proteins to gain entity into interstitial fluid. Once the phagocytes enter the area and encounter microbes, they release inflammatory mediators, which bring in even more phagocytes. Tissue repair may not be perfect, resulting in scarred tissue. Innate immune cells play a key role in innate immunity. These include leukocytes such as neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, monocytes, phagocytic cells such as macrophages and dendritic cells, natural killer cells and mast cells. So, white blood cells are larger than red blood cells. They have a nucleus and are able to move on their own so they can leave the blood and enter infected tissue. The first type of leukocyte we'll look at is neutrophils, which is the first type to site of infection. It can phagocytose microbes or debris. It releases granules and inflammatory cytokines to help kill invaders. And release a dense network of nucleic acids called NETS to trap and kill invaders. White blood cells are larger than red blood cells, have a nucleus and are able to move on their own so you can leave the blood cells infected in, into infected tissues. So next one we will look at is eosinophils. They make up 0.5 to 1% of white blood cells. They are important for killing larger pathogens such as parasitic worms, release inflammatory mediators such as cytotoxic proteins and can also cause tissue damage and play a role in alleged disease. Basophils, they make up less than 1% of white blood cells. They are the only blood immune cell to contain histamine. Histamine is an organic compound that has a variety of effects on the body and they release histamines and cytokines when activated. So now moving on to the phagocytic cells. These are mainly macrophages and dendritic cells. They engulf pathogens, debris and foreign substances. They are present in all cases of animal as the most fundamental and ancient body defence. Macrophages are derived from monocytes in the blood. The exited cells are called the sentinels of the immune system and function as a link between innate and active immune systems. Both macrophages and dendritic cells produce cytokines. The next type we will look at is mast cells. These are long lived tissue resident innate immune cells. They are located at the boundaries between tissues and external environments, such as mucosal membranes in the gut and lungs or at the skin. They are stimulated to release a variety of inflammatory mediators, such as cytokines, histamine, and prostaglandins. So mast cells are activated by allergens, pathogens and physiological mediators and they have important roles in defence against parasitic worms and allergic reactions. 
Look at natural killer cells. These are a type of lymphocyte we've along to the innate response. They are crucial for killing virus-infected cells, important for recognising and killing cancer cells. Constantly monitor other cells by binding to surface receptors. If the cells are healthy, they have inhibitory receptors. If the cells are unhealthy, they have activating receptors. Kinds of chemicals released by tissue and immune cells to coordinate local responses. They are chemical messages between cells, and these include hormones and glycoproteins. They activate immune cells, and the main cytokine groups in immunity are interferons, interleukins, and tumor necrosis factors. So, examples of cytokine family include the interferons, and these are small fam these are small proteins released by activated immune cells and by tissue cells infected with viruses. The interferon binds to the surface receptor of cells and triggers production of antiviral proteins and cytoplasm. They inhibit viral replication inside host cells and activate macrophages. So let's look at the stages of inflammation. So an injury breaks the skin barrier and introduces bacteria to tissue. Tissue resident mast cells are activated and secrete histamine. Histamine then makes the capillaries more permeable. Endothelial cells produce nitroxide and nitroxide is is basically a vasodilator. Stage 2, the capillaries dilate and become leaky. Fluid and neutrophils exit the capillaries and enter the site of the wound. Neutrophils are drawn into the area by chemotaxis. During this process, they add here, so they stick to the capillary wall, move into the tissue and are activated. Once activated, neutrophils produce the active compounds such as nitrogen oxide, which is a vasodilator, and hydrogen peroxide. So at the start, the number of neutrophils at the site of infection outnumber num macrophages, but as they secrete cytokines, they secrete more macrophages. Immune cells release cytokines and other inflammatory mediators. Neutrophils and macrophages engulf and destroy bacteria. The cytokines then stimulate fibroblasts in skin, which then start doing tissue repair. Capillaries in return, return to normal and the infection is brought under control. So during inflammation, capillaries become leaky and allow plasma proteins to enter the tissue, as I see in stage 2. Complement proteins kill the microbes without phagocytosis, and these use membrane attack complex to create channels in microbial plasma membranes. This causes the mi microbe to bust and also labels the pathogen to aid phagocytes. So, look at the next type involved in the immune system is pattern. Pathogen associated molecular pattern. So innate immunity depends on recognition of genuine molecular features common to many types of pathogens, otherwise known as pathogen associated molecular patterns. We've had these have conserved molecular features because the structures are vital to the survival of the pathogen. So how is that recognition accomplished? So in 1985, Nusli, Volhard and Vicious discovered Toll 1, which is a gene required for dorsal ventral development in the fruit fly Drospula. Melanogaster. 1996, Toll 1 was found to give the flies the ability to fight off fungal infections. So therefore, it was discovered that toll proteins exist in all animals and they are found in the membranes of macrophages, dendritic cells, and other immune cells. They function to recognise and bind to ligands with pattern associated molecular pathogen associated molecular patterns, such as liposaccharide, other microbial lipid and carbohydrates, viral and bacterial nucleic acids. A bac and ba a bacterial flagellum protein. So when toll protein on an immune cell binds a PAMP ligand, the second messengers are generated triggering cytokine secretion. These stimulate the activity of other leukocytes or innate immune response, but some also activate cells with acquired immune response. Since many but not all toll proteins are membrane bound receptors, the protein family is referred to as toll like receptors. So here's a nice wee diagram here, you can see what the toll receptors do. And the different types of the features. So for the bacterial, is the bacterial bacterial pumps, the LPF, peptidyl glycans, the favela proteins. For the virus, it's viral pumps, envelope proteins, DNA, RNA. The toll receptors can activate tissue repair mechanisms, activate adaptive immunity, and inflammatory response, response or release of cytokine mediators. So in summary, the innate immune system is our first line of defence. It includes physical barriers and mechanisms at epithelial surfaces such as those immune cells. It is non-specific, causes inflammation, 
and their key immune cells such as macrophages, neutrophils, mast cells and actual killer cells and these play a role in activating the adaptive immune response. 